Hi, this is Will. Today we're going to talk about the Dakota Fire Pit. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the things that uh, I've, I've seen in other videos that people have missed and things I've learned uh, back in the military back in the day that uh, I, I think a lot of the people that are doing the videos today on it uh, have missed, so I'm gonna, I want to cover that and go over it. And uh, the Dakota Fire Pit, what it basically is, is it was to, uh, came up with by the Dakota Indians. Uh, they used it like in areas where there's a lot of wind and, and whatnot, and uh, it was very effective for them. And uh, the military decided, well, we're going to use that for you know survival, escape, and evasion uh, because of the fact that when you make the, the fire into a pit, uh, the flames that come off of that and the light that's emanated from it uh, literally will uh, be a heck of a lot less than if you had a normal fire. Uh, the added option to that is in wind, you can also cook over it. It concentrates the heat more like a cylinder type of thing, you know, like a hair dryer. It allows you to cook a little faster and it's a little easier at windstorm. Uh, the military adopted and uh, taught us, and, and I'm going to teach you know try to teach you the, the proper way to do it. Um, what I got here is uh, I did what's called a 10 by 10. Now there, there's several ways you can do it. Uh, you can do a 10 by 10, you do a 12 by 12. Uh, a lot of guys online are you know saying you can do what's called you, know, you do an eight inch bridge, and what that is is between the two holes, your air intake and your other hole, uh, you know you could do just six or eight inches. Well, the problem with that, and the reason why I made this video is that. You really want to have, like our old instructor taught us, use your boot and use your first hole, you know, minus 10 by 10. So 10 inches across, you take your knife and you make a circle around your boot. Then you place your boot here or step, make your second hole start here and cut your secondary hole out and start digging it out. And the reason why you do this and, and why you don't want to do a shorter bridge, by bridge I mean the area, the tunnel length, the area on top is considered a bridge, is because the whole purpose of this, if you're doing a survival, escape, and invasion, a sear type of thing, the whole purpose is to keep the light down, keep the light from refracting off of the trees and the bushes around you, your face, and uh, you know, keep from being detected. Well, if you put this secondary hole close to this one and leave a small bridge, you're emanating twice as much light up uh, out of there, okay? And um, what you need to do is make sure that you get a tunnel so that the tunnel is at least 10 inches uh, long. Eight inches is kind of cutting it close. And that way the light coming down the tunnel is refracted and isn't seen coming out the top very well. And you'll see if, if I can splice this together because I'm not very, I'm technologically, technology challenged. I'm gonna try to put the video together. You may see my other video when I first put this together. And you can see, you very see hardly any light coming out of this when I light it. And we'll, we'll do that again once I get this going. I'm gonna show how you can cook over it and some other things you can do, drying boots and we're not with it. But let's talk about how I did this one. Well, I built this basically with a cheap uh, charade knife. It's a $20 special. And let me tell you, I, I don't get paid for any of this. I don't ask for subscribers. I don't get paid. I, I do this just to help y'all. Stuff I've learned, I wanna you know, give that back. Um, charade knife, it's awesome. Uh, you literally just cut down in there, cut you a, a first thing you wanna do is put your boot down, cut your hole around your, your boot, and you wanna try to dig that up like a, like a a pizza or like a manhole cover and you want to lift that out and the reason you're going to do that uh, that main piece that you take out of this and also out of your air hole is because if you're being tracked you're being evaded you're going to want to trace your seam in other words cover it all up so that nobody knows you were there as best as you can uh, I mean a good man track will be able to tell uh, you know if you left stuff like you broke branches off up in the trees where it's visible and you're not careful in how you get your branches for your fire, a good man tracker is trained to look for that stuff. And you know, you want to try to get your branches that are hidden up in the trees, you want to try to get downfall uh, trees that are falling down, the branches aren't on the ground, and you want to break them on the underside or to the side. Uh, you know, some people can't notice that you took these branches uh, because if you're being pursued, uh, you know, you can be, you can be found by not covering your scene very well. So you wanna make sure that you take the main pieces out when you start and put them to the side and then you know, pile your dirt close by. Uh, you know, If they're tracking you with a dog, you're gonna get found. The only way that I know that you can uh, not get found with a dog is to swim up a large, if you have a wide river and you swim up river upstream, uh, your scent will be carried down, uh, down, the, down the river. Um, and tracker handlers will know that also and they'll also run their dog, their handler will run their dog up that side to, the river and try to get some of your scent cells or whatever that deposit on the side uh, and find where you exit the river. Uh, the only thing you do in that case is swim across the river and then you know even if you, your river's you know pretty fast you may go downstream a little bit and then come back up and try to swim up the edge. The handler's not going to necessarily swim his dog across the other side and check. 
might be your only uh, option there. So I got off on a tangent, stuff in my head. Um, getting back to this, so 10 by 10, what that means is you take your boot, you dig your first uh, pizza pie or manhole cover, you dig it out, you start your hole. Dig this hole down 10 inches. You got 10 inch wide, 10 inches deep. Do you 12 inches wide, do 12 inches deep. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, your boot again, step over here, start your secondary hole. And this one you only want to dig enough so you can get your arm down in there. If you know if you're the Hulk or something, you might need a bigger hole, but otherwise your hand diameter is usually good enough so that you can get down in there and you're gonna dig that tunnel. At, so like I say, it's at least 10 inches that tunnel is gonna be at least 10 inches or 12 inches, depending on which kind of you're making. But I, I recommend at least 10 inches, and you'll see why when we get this lit, how you won't have light coming out this hole. If you make it shorter, you're gonna have light coming out. Both holes is like headlights on a car. It's gonna light your face up. It's gonna light the trees up around you. And uh, you don't want that if you're being evading. If you're doing this for camping, for hunting, like I do, uh, you don't need to worry about that. You can put it wherever you want. The thing that I wanna make sure I, I tell you about, I almost forgot, uh, I do this from scratch. I don't practice any of it. Uh, your air intake hole has to be towards the windward side, not to the leeward side. So in other words, today the wind is blowing every which way. When I did this, the wind was coming in from this direction. So I made my air intake hole on this side. That's what you want to do. Do you need to do that? No, absolutely not. And you'll see when I get this going, the wind's whipping everywhere. Uh, because what happens is if you do it right and you make your tunnel two and, uh, two and a half inches to three inches, just enough to get your hand through it, where you can reach down and get your knife and wiggle it through and get your hand through, uh, it'll create what's a venture effect. So as the heat is building from the fire, the heat rises, it creates a venture effect, pulls air in through the air intake and gets your fire going good. Uh, you can control your fire. Another thing I mentioned before I forget, if you take a branch off the tree that has leaves on it, you can cover this over that branch leaf a little bit, just like a damper on a fireplace, and you control how much oxygen gets to the fire and so you can keep the flames down to a minimum and also, you know, keep that from getting as bright as you, you know, it could. I'm, I'm speaking like uh, Jerry's kids today, sorry about that. Um, the other thing I use for this is something new. Uh, this is a drowl, or trowel, whatever they call it. Um, this worked great. Uh, I had an aluminum one that me and my wife used uh, you know, for your poopy when you're out uh, camping. And we do a lot of back with country uh, hunting and camping. So I bought these new titanium ones called Vargo. And I thought when I first got it, it weighs nothing. And I thought this wasn't gonna, yeah, hang on, work. I literally dug this thing out. And what I like about it, it's got these serrated edges on it so when you cut through the roots when you're done and you're getting through there you make sure you cut the roots off so that the roots don't burn up inside there and start the tree on fire later give you a position away later so I really like this it works really well um, if you're a light packer this is the way to go now if you're a camper I recommend you get an old army entrenching tool those work great or any of the Gerber entrenching tools which you can angle the the blade on it to a 90 degrees because then you can scoop down in there and pull the dirt out and throw it out. I had to do this by hand, basically. Dig it out and use this sideways and pull the dirt out. Uh, trenching tool, if you have it, is great. Uh, but if you're in a survival situation, this may be all you have. And you can do it with this. I pretty much did most of this with this knife. Now, I took my time. And so I wasn't going to do it on video because I drank a lot of iced tea. And I do things, you know, my, my pace. Uh, and I expend a lot of energy. Um, but I really like the cheap charade knife. And I like this Fargo tool. Uh, like I said, I bought these, I think it's like 24 bucks. I like that it, uh, they put this on top here, covers your hand, and also it can be used as a tent stake in a situation. You have a tarp or whatever, you want to put a plug type of tarp, a single tarp, or a debris shelter, and you need one line of 550 cord going down to it. Uh, this thing makes a really great uh, tent stake that you can use it for. Okay, uh, so I don't forget, I get off on a tangent. Um, when, you, when you do your fire, you put your air intake towards the wind, 10 by 10, make sure you get that tunnel. Um, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make, like I said, make sure you're in the trees, try to get 360 coverage if you're you know, being evaded. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you do your fire lay that you put your bottom uh, lumber in the bottom uh, facing towards the air intake. I, I noticed other guys didn't mention that. How I'm laying these here, the air intake is going, coming this direction. So you want to put the gaps so air can go between it. You want to use lumber that's about this thick down in the bottom. And the reason why, and then you know, you want to uh, baton it with your knife like this. Uh, you should baton any any lumber that's over a thumb uh, size and diameter. You should always baton it like this in half so it'll burn. But you want this thicker stuff in the bottom and then baton it. And the reason for that is you don't hold 
it's in the, in the pit, it won't emanate as much light, and at night you can uh, cuddle in the fetal position here. Your hands can be warm here, and your body, your chest, and core can be warm from this hole from just the coals that are in there. So when you lay your fire lay in, lay your bottom ones in, these are just some small ones I have, my wife wouldn't let me cut down any bigger limbs, but lay these like this and then take all your other stuff, splice it, you can do it however you want. You can do a log, a log cabin type, where you lay it like this, or you can do, you know, you can do a TP, however you want to do it down in there, you can do it. it it's totally uh, up to you how you want to do it, and, and that's your option uh, for doing it. What I like about using the Dakota Fire Pit is, you can take, uh, if you want to cook over it, you can get a Y branch like this, and depending on how high you need it, how high your flame is going to be, you can uh, take this and stick it in there, and then you can take a stick, go across to another one, and you basically got a rotisserie in there, where you could put your food across here and whatnot. And if you got a rabbit or whatever, you can put a higher one in, run it across the stick, and you cook slower and you basically got to rotisserie by using two Y sticks like this. So just by digging that in there. The other thing you can do with this that I really like, and then I'll show you. I should dig that in a little deeper. I should have even spear tip these a little bit better and they will uh, stick in better, but I didn't do it for this one. I just wanted to show this demonstration. Hopefully it won't fall over me. You can take your boot like this when the fire is going put the boot over it like this it'll hold the boot open and it'll hold it over the fire now I didn't I didn't get this set in there as good as I should have but as the flames come up it's going to dry your boot because what happens is you get this uh, wet in a river or whatnot uh, all your soles are either a they're glued on or they're stitched and glued and if you stick it next to a normal fire it will dry it but it will also melt the glue so you're going to want to keep it a distance from the fire the other way you can dry the inside is you can uh take rocks, not river rocks, and heat them up in a regular fire and put them inside the boot. With this kind of fire, you cannot do that. So this is a fantastic way, and it actually works. I've actually done it. Put a stick next to your fire, put your boots on each side. The heat goes up into the boot and dries the boot all the way down to the toe without melting your uh, glue that's in your, in your heel. So that's just uh, one way you can do it. So let's get this fire started so you can see what we got. What I use here is basically a cotton ball. Uh, in my very first video that my daughter taught me how to do, uh, taught me how to do, she set up my, my site for me. Uh, I show my video how you take cotton ball, saturate with Vaseline, uh, dip in some old candles, and then seal them up in the freezer, put them in tinfoil. You break it open and you make your, uh, your fireball. What, what you can do with that is, it's an easier fighting fire starting tool. Now you can do it in the pit or you can do it up here. I'll do it up here just for, for sake. Always check your striker first. If you're doing a ferro rod, make sure you get some of the stuff off first before you do it, before you actually get down there. Some of the Vaseline got on it. So take that, and then you set her down in there, get your fire going, and we'll let that get started. And uh, I got Vaseline on, that's why it didn't start operator error again. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is, you wanna cook over this. So you get two sticks, they're about the right size here. Uh, they'll cover the pit. Put them on each side, and you want green wood, because the green wood will uh, uh, not burn as easy from the fire and you place that on fire. Now what I like to use is, is this right here. It's uh, You get these at any Lowe's or whatever in their uh, grill section, and what it does is uh, it rolls up. It's stainless steel, and you can throw this in your pack if you're a backcountry hunting. It wastes nothing, it, literally nothing. I've used this a lot, as you can see. Uh, you fold it out, and can I get that piece of bacon from you, honey? Throw that bag to me underneath you. Bacon. You show the fire while, you, while you're doing that. Put that over your fire. Just show you a piece of bacon. I know everybody knows how this works, but I go ahead and just cook this piece of bacon because the dogs are in the house and I can tease them. So you just, now if you get smoke going from it, you get smoke coming off of this. You got the grass going on fire there. You can take a, a branch off the tree 
and you can cover it or in this situation I'm going to use this to close the hole temporarily it's going to burn some of the grass around it because I didn't I didn't do a very good job on that uh, but I've used the ball you can see here uh, but you do the same thing with a branch uh, whatever and you can literally clog that hole now you can see that's pretty well raging, but let's go ahead and let her take a look down in the hole and see what you can see down in the hole while it's burning up here. I should trim that grass around there. Can you see the light coming through there? An angle? Okay. So let me go ahead and throw this back in there, just cut some of the air off. All right. Now as you can see, the venter effect's working. The reason there's gonna be a lot more smoke now coming out of there uh, is because I've cut the hole off, so you're gonna get more smoke, but you can, uh, and you can limit how much of the uh, wood you put down in there to cook this stuff. So, but you can see you can you can cook on this real easily. I was uh, kind of silly and didn't trim the grass around this, but uh, it's not an issue. It'll burn out. Um, and you can see how easy this cooks on there. And you can move the grate and do whatever you want to do with it. You see how easy that works. And that's pretty well burnt. Are pretty well cooked so so there you go there you have it that's the coat of fire pit things I recommend you get like I say is you get yourself and you, you really all you need is a knife but if you're gonna do this any other time I recommend that you uh, you know get one of those entrenching tools and use it it works really good and uh, I put a little bit more uh, wood down in there that I really needed you really only need a pile of you know wood about like this to really get a good fire going. And so I put more in there than I should have. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw the rest of the fire in there and get her going. She just, but even if she backs up from a distance, I'll have my wife back up and you can see how, how far you can see the flames. It's not very far at all. So if you look from a distance, it's hard to see the flames shooting over. And it puts off a, a lot of heat. As you can see, you can cook something over on a rotisserie real easily. You can see it cooked that bacon pretty quick uh, on there. And like I said, you can limit the amount of oxygen. You can see I've got just very little oxygen flowing around it, but it's still able to get oxygen. Even if I were to put you know, a branch with leaves on it, it would do the same thing this ball that my dogs had did it. And uh, literally it'll, it'll uh, do that. So again, make sure when you do this, if you're doing you know, your military or whatever, and you're in an invasion situation, that you try to cover your scene up as much as you can afterwards and uh, you know cover your scene cover your tracks leave no trace behind make sure you take your branches from uh, uh, up in the trees or on, on dead standing wood and uh, well that's Dakota fire pit I hope I didn't forget anything just wanted to cover it for you and uh, show it to you and show you how you can make a little fire pit and it's relatively easy to make it, it takes a little time depending on what kind of soil you're in if you're in rock or rocky soil it may take a little longer uh, sand, of course, that's almost difficult to do. You really don't want to build it sand. You just make a keyhole fire if you're in sand or other areas in the wind. And I'll do another video on that keyhole fire. Basically, keyhole fire is the same thing as this. You cut a pit and you go down about 10 inches. And then from there, you take and uh, dig this section out. Instead of having a, a uh, hole like this for air, you literally have uh, a trench, just a small trench in the w going into the wind, and it feeds your fire uh, without blowing it out from the wind so well there's my video i hope you enjoyed it and uh thanks for watching